welcome back to Moretta Threads. Today we are making a two-piece mesh set. All you're going to need is a meter of power mesh fabric. This is the one that I use and I will link below where I got mine from. Um, aside that and the sewing pattern that I've coupled with this video, that should be mostly all you need, I think. Let's start. To begin, print the first page and make sure you use the little measuring box to make sure it is to scale. I measured one centimeter and one inch and if that is correct, you can print the remaining pages and begin to trim the border so that you can connect the pages. So I don't need to trim every single border. Um, I just trim the right hand side and the bottom because of how this template comes together. And then I overlap the two and these little arrows will come together and they should touch to create an X. Once that's done, you can cut out your segments of the pattern and begin to trim them down to the size that you need them to be. I trimmed my pattern as a medium skirt and a size small top, but because of how I add in little details to the top later on, I actually wish that I had made it a medium to account for um, the firmness that will occur after you pull in the sides for the detailing that I added up at the end. Once you've cut everything out, you can begin to sew. I started on the skirt by overlocking the seams on the center front. So this bit here that I have overlocked, that is where the split detail will be. So I only overlocked these two edges. Then I brought back in my sewing pattern because it has a little marker of where you will add a little pin because that is where you will stop sewing later for that split detail. Once that bit is done, you can bring the back segment of the skirt and overlay that on top and add a little pin in each of the corners because you are then going to take that across to your overlocker and overlock these edges. Once you finish overlocking, we're gonna add the straight seam in. So if you remember this little bit here where we added that pin, because that's where we will stop sewing for the split, we will take the, um, the skirt across to our straight sewer and remember to do start the stitch with a back stitch and make sure that you end where that needle is so you have that split detail and remember to back stitch again. With that done, we will move on to the waistband now. So I cut the waistband on a fold and I brought that a brack across to my straight sewer. So if you look here, we're just going to do about a one centimeter seam allowance, backstitch to begin. Oh yeah, no, I did. Okay. <laughs> and backstitch at the end. So what I'm going to show you here is the reason why I do that, this instead of overlocking is because you open up that seam. So it's flat. And then when you fold it on top of each other, it creates a thinner profile. So that's why you 
use the straight sewer so that you can open it up and press it flat. Once you've done that, you want to attach the waistband onto the skirt. So I added a little pin for where the center of the back of the skirt is, and I'm going to apply the waistband seam exactly where that marker is and see here that I am applying that waistband inside of the skirt so that we have a concealed seam. And then I did the same thing for the front. So here I pull that waistband like that. So then I can find the center point on that waistband so that I can do the exact same thing to the front of the skirt. So now that our pins are in and the waistband is attached, it's time to overlock the top edge and overlock the bottom edge. So start your overlocked edge from the waistband marker on the back, that center back seam, and bring it all the way through and finish back at that same point. And then you will overlock the hem of the skirt. Because overlockers usually have a thicker fabric going through it, because you usually have two layers, at the end here when I pull out the fabric, um, sorry, pull out the skirt, you see that I am just stretching out the threads because they gathered and they were a little bit too tight. So I'm just stretching them out so that they lay flat. We have finished sewing the waistband of the skirt, so now we just have to do the hem of the skirt. So good side of the fabric facing up, I have flipped over the bottom hem of the skirt about one centimeter and I'm just doing a little stitch here on this side and then I'm going to bring my skirt across to this corner here and do the exact same thing again and I will show you why we did that later. So I always like to start sewing on a side seam. So here I am here, wrong side of the fabric facing up, curving over that hem so that we can um, finish up the hem. So starting there on the side seam, about one centimeter up, start hemming that bottom. Now, as you sew around, you're going to get closer to that little bottom edge that we did earlier where we flipped it up and sewed it. What you're doing here is turning out that corner and lying it flat. And the reason why we do that is so that you can have a nice crisp little corner. It's not necessary. You don't have to do this step, but I do recommend it for a cleaner finish. So just make sure you're sewing slowly when you get to these steps, because you'll just be lifting up the foot a lot to rotate the fabric as I've just done here. So lifted the foot up, still making sure that we're about one centimeter in, foot goes back down and we sew again. So as you get closer to the top of that split, you're going to slow down again, lift the foot up, rotate the fabric. You can do a back stitch here if you need more reinforcement, um, but it's not necessary. So foot goes back down, straight stitch across just enough so that you're holding on to that one centimeter side allowance. Foot goes up, rotate, And then you go back down again and sew it down. So as we get close to this corner, again, we're going to turn it inside out 
to conceal that little corner edge. Make sure it's as clean of a right angle as you can get. And sew down the line. With the skirt finished, now we can move on to the top. So taking apart the front and the back, you're going to lay them flat on top of each other. And you will add together, add together those shoulder seams by just pinning them together like this. With that done, you'll do an overlock on those two edges and now you can bring in the sleeves. So here I am just cutting out the notches in the sleeves because I forgot, but I did do them for the front and back of the t-shirt and they're just little markers to help you know where to place the sleeve. Once you have finished pinning those sleeves to the shoulders, you can bring that across to your overlocker and overlock those edges to join them together. The next step is to overlock the side seams to close the t-shirt together. So I just add a little pin here where the sleeves meet and do the same on the other side and take that through to my overlocker and close the seams off. Moving on to the neckband, we're just going to repeat the same steps that we did earlier for the waistband. So you're essentially going to repeat the same process as what you did for the waistband of the skirt. Here we are with the neckband and we're finding the center front and the center back and adding a pin as a marker. And then I grab the t-shirt and I find the center back and center front of that neck area so that we can join those two sections together. Once you have that neckband applied with the pins, you're going to take that across to your overlocker and overlock that edge. And then the neckband will be done. Once you have completed the side seams of the t-shirt, this is what you will be left with. If you have a cover stitch machine, you will cover stitch the sleeves and the hem of the top. If you don't have a cover stitch machine, what you can instead do is repeat the process of what we did here of the bottom of the skirt, which was just overlocking it and then straight sewing it. So here I am on my cover stitch machine, closing off that hem, sorry, finishing off that hem. Um, but if you have a straight sewer, you can go online and look up how to use your straight sewer with twin needles so that you can achieve a similar effect. After you're finished on the cover stitch machine, you will likely be finished with the garment if you used a colorful mesh fabric. However, if you've used a black like this, you can take it one step further and add in detailing. Um, I used this white top as a reference, but in the PDF that you have downloaded that I have provided, it has little markers of where you should put pins into the black top and you use those little pins as a guide of where you will sew when you're on the cover stitch machine. So what I am doing here on the cover stitch machine is now adding in that V panel in the shirt. So on the first pin at the bottom of the shirt, I am starting to sew. 
And then as I continue, I want to try and find that second pin, hold on to it and then sew upwards. And then once I've gotten to that pin, I want to find the third pin, which is located near the shoulder, pinch that bit of fabric and then continue to guide to that, to that point. So you're just going to repeat that one more time to do the V panel to the other side of the shirt and then you will do the little side seam at the center front that's that's located near the collar um, and then this is what you will be left with. I ended up trimming off the little excess phrase of thread just because I don't like them when they dangle because they itch me <laughs> um, and then I also did grab a pair of duckbill scissors and trim off the excess of where I hemmed the garment however if you've cut it straight it really isn't that necessary and you don't have to do it that is the end of the tutorial I hope that was helpful if you have any more questions please comment below and I will get back to you um, you can follow me on both TikTok and Instagram at Moretta Threads if you like my style, I'm your vibe. I'll be having more fits similar to this. Also feel free if you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that like button and turn on notifications because then you'll get first access to the discount codes that I offer that last the first 48 hours of the videos being released. So yeah, good luck with your outfit. You're going to look so cute and tag me if you make it. Okay, bye.